Hello, my name is Nathalie Yamb. A few weeks ago, I went for the first but not the last time to the Central African Republic, CAR. For it is in this country that one of the most bitter battles for the liberation of the continent is taking place in a rather unexpected way. The Central African Republic has become the stake in the struggle for influence between France and Russia in Africa. Beyond the narrative propagated by the Western mainstream medias, I wanted to go on the ground and make my own investigation. I published the French version of this video 10 days ago. Three days after I, it went out, the French sent an ambassador, the Special Envoy for Public Diplomacy, I don't know what that title means, on a mission to Bangui to, let me quote, reconnect with constructive dialogue, unquote, which in their vocabulary means threatening, lying, and blackmailing. But first things first. Only a few people know this. The story of the origins of the French setback in the Central African Republic is the perfect illustration of shooting yourself in the foot. Let's rewind to September 2017. In Somalia, 1,500 weapons of the Shebab militia are seized. The car under embargo is interested in buying them to equip its regular army, the FACA, facing a rebellion. France, the self-proclaimed guardian of African countries at the UN, submits a resolution to this effect to the Security Council. But Russia vetoed it. Paris then told Central, the Central African Republic president to Adera to directly discuss with the Russians. And this is when the love story began. Faustin Archange to Adera met with Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister in Sochi in October 2017. In the process, the Russians lifted their veto in December. What France did not know was that the discussions had been so fruitful that a global package had been negotiated. And so in January 2018, um, the delivery began. No longer 1,500 Kalashnikovs, but 6,200. 900 pistols, 270 rocket launchers, 20 anti-aircraft guns, all accompanied by Russian military advisors. In May 2018, Tuadera was the special guest of Vladimir Putin at the International Economic Forum in St. Petersburg. In August of the same year, a defense agreement was signed between the two countries, which also included the training of FACA soldiers at Russian military academies. So France lost its foothold in the Central African Republic by pushing them into the arms of the Russians. Today, an angry French government is cutting its budgetary support and withdrawing its military cooperation. There were five people, while leaving behind its mercenaries like Juan Remy Quignolo in charge of destabilizing its former colony. I will put somewhere the link of the return of the assassins, a video I made on this very subject so you can watch it after this one. But Russia and Rwanda, Bangui's new military allies, are keeping a watchful eye on their Central African partner, protecting it and helping it to learn to defend itself. But France, not digesting its defeat, continues its Machiavellian maneuvers. In addition to having cut its direct support of 6 billion CFA franc per year, which does not even cover the salary bills, but that may be legitimate. And at the end of the day, we 
don't, don't give a damn about it. The Macron administration is also lobbying hard to ruin the lives of the Central African people and the reputation of the car among international partners and investors. Let me give you one of the latest examples. The Central African Republic, as its name suggests, is a landlocked country. Although it has oil deposits on its territory, they have not yet been exploited. Its oil supply is therefore done through imports on a 80-20 basis. 80% is imported from Congo and transported during the rainy season by barges uh, on the Ubangi River. And the remaining 20% is transported by road from Cameroon. It is clear that the latter option is much more expensive than the river transport. The Central African government placed its order and initiated payments on, for the year 21-22. You know that oil is paid for in dollars, right? It's therefore necessary to get to the car's assets at the central bank BEAC and uh, in the operating account at the French public treasury, where 50% of the foreign currencies of the countries of the CFA zone are still kidnapped, contrary to the fake news circulated by the Quai affiliated medias. But someone at the French public treasury has decided to block the payment for several weeks until the shipment was sold to another buyer. Just like that. As you know, the Bank of Central African States, BEAC, like the Central Bank of West African State, BCAO, are the monetary instruments of French colonization in Africa. It is through the BEAC that Paris is implementing the retaliatory measure aimed at sanctioning the Central African president who is fighting for peace and the sovereignty of his country. The shortage caused by the French delaying tactic is meant to further damage the country's already shaky economy and to push the population to rise up against Tuadera. I was in Bangui when the supply difficulties began. It didn't work. I hope that all Central Africans who watch this video will understand that the two places where they should go to vehemently demonstrate their discontent are in front of the French embassy and in front of the headquarters of the BEAC in Bangui. This is another opportunity for me to repeat that African countries should explore the path of decentralized cryptocurrency to escape the monetary prison of the CFA franc, the franc of the French colonies in Africa. I had talked about it in more detail in a previous video. I don't remember if I made it in, in an English version of it, but I will link it somewhere anyway. The Central African Republic, which is, by the way, the lowest spending state in CEMAC, has also successfully passed eight reviews of the IMF. But because the Tuadera government found ways to resist the French-funded rebel attack in December, Paris is instrumental in getting the IMF and the World Bank to also reduce their support to the country under the pretext of unforeseen expenditures by Bangui. So they actually wanted Tuadera to let the citizen be massacred by drug-addled, bloodthirsty rebels without defending them. The French are mean. They are the embodiment of evil, at least from the point of view of the African I am. A walk around Bangui is enough to support this claim. These people have wickedness and mediocrity written in their DNA. No country colonized by French has ever been developed. Perhaps also because French itself is part of the European Third World.
but 180 years of presence in Central Africa. For what I saw there, no way. Indeed, the decree creating the French colony of Ubangi Shari, as the country was then called, was signed in 1903. But apart from offering it to concessionary companies that plundered it without thinking about long-term development, French colonization was distinguished above all by the brutality with which it requisitioned the local population as abused labor force which was to build the Congo Ocean Railroad leading to the revolt of the buyers who were fed up with the violence used by the French. This led to one of the many wars watched by friends in Africa but passed over in silence in French school textbooks, the War of Congo Wara. The car belongs to the category of geological scandals. That means it has in its soil, as does the DRC, an immense amount of mineral wealth, uranium, oil, limestone, iron, diamonds, gold, cobalt, rare earth, uh, coltan, bauxite, etc. There are more than 470 mineral occurrences. But the car was unfortunately colonized by France, which unilaterally and selfishly decided to make this territory a reserve of raw materials for its own use and benefit. As a result of this decision, since 1959 and the assassination of the founding father of the Central African Republic, the Pan-African Barthélemy Boganda, Central African governments are forbidden, under penalty of overthrow, to exploit their subsoil to obtain the means to bring their population out of underdevelopment and misery. Unless, of course, as Bokassa did with Giscard d'Estaing, they offer the diamonds to the French president. It should be known that despite these immense riches in Central African Republic, 71% of the population lives in poverty. The HDI is 0 0.397, the second last place in the world just ahead of Niger. Infant mortality is 81 per thousand. 40 women out of 1,000 die giving birth. The um, literacy rate is 38%. The secondary school enrollment rate is 14%, with 50% of school closed due to precar the precarious political situation of the country. The average salary is $43, and only 14.3% have access to electricity. Given this picture, the issue that underlies all the political and security tensions in the country is very simple to grasp. Should Central African wealth remain underground to continue to serve as reserves for France? Or should it be extracted to provide the government, the local government, with all the means necessary to lead the citizens to development and well-being? This is what is at the heart of the battle between Macron's France and Faustin Archange Touadera today. That's all there is to it, and everything else is diversion. When it's not the French state that is at the helm of destabilization, it is the French multinationals that are involved. A report published by the NGO The Century clearly establishes the criminal actions of the Castel Group, a French sugar and beverage giant, Coca-Cola's bottling partner in African countries, which has financed armed militias responsible for atrocities in the Central African Republic, including the attack on a camp for displaced person in November 2018 in Alindao, which resulted in the death of at least 112 people, 
including 19 children. I deeply regret that the Central African government, following the publication of this report, has not yet itself announced an investigation into these accusations, which are far from surprising. French multinationals specialize in financing terrorism and other criminal activities. Before Castel, there was the Lafarge Group, the French cement giant, financing the Islamic State in Syria as the French judiciary established in 2018. We, also, we will also mention Total and Areva, accustomed to criminal and illegal practices. It is therefore necessary not only for Central African officials to communicate on this subject, but also to react ruthlessly by sending to court Castel's manager in the Central African Republic. But despite all this, the financing, arming and training of rebels and terrorists, the financial stranglehold, the propagation of fake news, despite the media intoxication, attempted coups and assassination, Tuadera and his government are resisting France. The main challenge in the Central African Republic was security. And if a few months ago, in December 2020, the rebels were almost at the gates of Bangui, today the regular army and its allies have recovered 80% of the territory. I went to Bangui in July and August, and I must say that the atmosphere is serene. These bodes well for investors. Apart from the mineral wealth that is waiting to be exploited, the car is a territory of 623,000 square kilometers with 30 million hectares of extremely fertile land. Rivers, forests, sun, you name it, the country has it. The Central African Republic does not only have diamond, it is a diamond. Row for the moment and cut it could be taken for a vulgar stone without the shine. This is part of the French narrative, which is all too easily spread internationally. It is important for Paris that the world doesn't realize the potential of the country, because all of the data we have today are data received by proxy and in drips and drabs from the colonists. But things are changing, and this is another reason for the French rage. For the first time in the history of the Central African Republic, a geological study taking into account the entire territory initiated by President Tuadera is being conducted. In conclusion, the Central African Republic deserves not only the support of all those who want to see the emancipation of Africa become a reality, but also the attention of all African, Asian, South American and Western investors who are interested in win-win partnerships, and also the attention of European states, which must understand the selfish approach of France, which wants to prevent them from forging fruitful links with the Central African Republic in order to keep for itself alone the access to the raw materials that the country has. Open your eyes and do as I do. Go to the field to see the reality for yourself. Singila.